But for me, one of the most interesting historic facts in the Bible comes to us in a popular story in the book of Daniel. But according to the Dead Sea Scrolls, it was attributed to the wrong king. So let's take a look at the story in Daniel chapter 4, where King Nebuchadnezzar goes mad for a period of seven years until he turns to God and is healed. Now, even before the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered, scholars suspected that this was about someone else. One of the reasons is we actually know quite a bit about this time period. A king going missing for seven years would have been a huge deal, and we would have records of it. Turns out, that's exactly what we have. But for another king. If you go down to chapter 5, you'll see King Belshazzar. According to Daniel, Belshazzar is Nebuchadnezzar's son. But he was actually the son of King Nabonidus. And Belshazzar was not the king. Nabonidus was. But Nabonidus became ill for a time, and when he got better, he disappeared for a period of ten years. During this time, his son was in charge, and it caused a lot of problems. For one thing, we know from the Babylonian Chronicles that the priests of Marduk were upset because they couldn't perform annual rituals that required the presence of the king. And while he was gone, he started worshipping the moon god Sin, whom he wanted to replace Marduk at the head of the pantheon. Which might be why people started calling him mad. Now this is 4Q242. It's one of the fragments discovered among the Dead Sea Scrolls, and it's called the Prayer of Nabonidus. And it confirmed what historians had already suspected, but couldn't really prove. I was smitten for a period of seven years. I became a beast. But he wasn't actually sick. He was in the Arabian wilderness trying to secure new trade routes. Remember, he was sick before he left. Then I prayed for God to forgive my sins and was exorcised by one of the Jews who had been exiled. Obviously, that didn't happen either. There's some evidence that he might have gone back to primarily worshipping Marduk, but nothing about him worshipping the Jewish god. Now, Nabonidus was king when Babylon was conquered by Cyrus the Great and welcomed the Jews back from exile. That's when these stories about him started to develop. But it was King Nebuchadnezzar who conquered Jerusalem and sent the Jews into exile in the first place. You can imagine why later Jewish authors would want to attribute such an embarrassing story to him. One of the more difficult things for me to understand is how can someone who has intelligence and understand the history of what was going on, but yet not have the critical thinking to realize how errant their book is. He initially said that a biblical fact, but <laughs> you went on to prove that this, what you call a biblical fact is not actually a fact that the Bible, the writers purposely wrote about King Nebuchadnezzar when it was King Nebuchadnezzar and they purposely wrote the story to fit their revenge against Nebuchadnezzar. You demonstrated that perfectly. You also demonstrated how when the Bible says that, oh, and Nebuchadnezzar began to worship the Lord or understood the Lord and what you demonstrated as well. Nebuchadnezzar always remained a worshiper of Marduk. Nebuchadnezzar went on to worship the goddess, the moon goddess Sin and actually moved to Nineveh for a while and made that the primary place for worshiping of the goddess Sin, which is why the priest of Marduk welcomed Cyrus in when he conquered Babylon without a fight. But you, you, you demonstrated the fact that the Bible has errancy in it, that man wrote things based on their own political agendas for their time. And then wrote it in as if it was the word of God. And yet people continue to believe it. If they did that with King Nebuchadnezzar, if they made it where he worshiped their God and never did, if they made it where he is not the right king to go out and be a beast, and they made it where he didn't actually go insane, it's just the opinion of the Marduk priest, or he was and he was out conquering. If you know they've done that in this part of the Bible then why do you think they could not have and would not have politicized and corrupted or just wrote something to make you think that it is from some deity? Why would you think that this book is not in its entirety the creation of people who were in control of the government or of the people at that time frame? That it is all creations of man. Think about that. And y'all have a great day. And remember always, you have to free yourself to be yourself because your greatness is non-negotiable. Good journey. Good vibrations.